Hey, what's up? This is Václav. Today we're going to be talking about dashboards. Uh, I will show you the way how I use Home Assistant. Now, it's a bit of a challenge because usually I make a video about single topic and I explain it quite in detail so you understand how it's done and you can follow me. Now, today I need to show you everything about Home Assistant from the first video to the last one and talk about each individual control, how I use it, why it's there and how it's done. Just quite a challenge if I want to make this video uh, so it's short and uh, watchable. Uh, in fact, I have asked on the YouTube community blog uh, a question uh, whether I should uh, make it a live stream where you could ask me questions and I can go there and show you how it's done. Or make it pre-recorded video. 79 of you answered and 75% uh, of you responded that you would rather have this uh, concise pre-recorded video. So I have a bit of challenge now because uh, it should be short, it shouldn't be like hours long, but uh, I should show everything. By the same time it should be in sufficient detail so you understand how it's done and you can follow me. So let's get started. So let's go to my home assistant and uh, let's start uh, with my home page, the landing page that opens when I start the home assistant. The idea behind this page is it should show me an overview of what is important around the house. That's why the icon for this view is house. One of the main principles I try to follow with this dashboard is I aim to show the least amount of information, the least amount of controls possible to do the job. Because if I have too many things in there, the important stuff will be hidden somewhere in the context in between hundreds of other things and I won't see that. I would have to be looking for it and when it changes, I will not see it. So whenever I put something on the screen, I'm thinking, do I really need to see it there? Is it important? If it changes, does it mean anything for me? The first card in this view is the presence. Now, does it pass the test? Do I really need to see it on this dashboard? Now, this is quite subjective matter. Maybe you don't need to see that, but for me, I decided that this information is quite interesting for me. I'd like to know who is home or who is where. And it's also uh, one of the key information that drives number of automations or changes the way how things behave. So for me, this is quite important, but I don't need to see people who are not home. So if there is uh, someone, there is no point showing a picture of a person and saying they are not home. So I would like them to only show up when they arrive into some of the known zones. And the way how it's done is uh, there is a uh, card of type entity filter that shows the number of entities I would like to show, so the number of people uh, I would like to show in this card. And there is also a filter for the state, so it only shows uh, the entities uh, if they appear in one of those zones. So I can change that and I can add to the list and manage it through the map. Other than that, it's a standard glance card. I use glance card on this view a lot because this page is uh, meant to show an overview. It's meant to show only what is important. It's not meant to go to very low level of detail. For that, we have the other views. And glance card does exactly that. It shows a horizontal set of icons, each representing a entity and its state by either text or changing color. Next, related to the presence, there is information about the status of the security systems. This one also uh, drives a number of uh, automations, but it's also uh, good to know for me uh, when I look at the front screen whether the alarm is set uh, or unset, whether I've forgotten to set it up. And there's also automation that will remind me if nobody is home and we forgot to set the alarm. So this is quite important information to have it there. Then I have a bunch of other controls and uh, the way how this is set up is this is a uh, horizontal stack. That's why we have those three boxes, one next to the other. But the way how horizontal stack works is it will divide the space into three equal areas. 
and I didn't want this in this case because uh, I wanted the uh, first one to be smaller than the others. And in fact, I wanted the middle one to be the biggest, even bigger than the last one. Now, there's a couple of ways to do that. What I decided to do is I decided to change the width of the panels directly in the cascading style sheets. And to do that, I'm using the custom car mod card by Thomas Lowen. And what this card allows is uh, it allows me to uh, modify the cascading style sheets for each of the controls. So what I have really done is I have a uh, regular horizontal stack, but for each of the uh, cards in the stack, I add a style and I'm adding the width of the card. So for the first one, I'm saying that the card has a width only 75%. For the second one, I say the width is 125%. So I'm taking the 25% from the first one and I'm adding it to it. But then I have to set the margin back by 25% because otherwise it would have started uh, normally where the card was supposed to be and it will overflow to the right. So it's kind of a dirty hack, but hey, it works. And uh, the last one is unmodified. I left there, the margin left zero and with 100%, but this is when I was playing with it. I didn't have to include it there because this is just the default size and position. I also use the style sheets uh, for the sensors, for the charging time left and for the battery level. Uh, I like those uh, to change color when the car starts charging or stops charging. And by default, Home Assistant uh, supports changing icon color for binary sensors, but not for regular sensors. So uh, I had to deal with them through, again, changing the style. And I'm changing the style in a way that uh, there is a template. So the color of the icon, it's the style paper item icon color. And then there is a template which says if the state of the switch city go charging, so if the card is charging is on, then I'm using the color and this is the style paper item icon active color. So this is the active color. Otherwise, it's paper item icon color. So this is the dimmed one inactive. So I'm using this one in number of areas. I use it for the uh, entity battery level and the charging time left. Uh, so when the car is charging, I will not only see the percentage, but it will be indicated by the change color. So I will know the charging is active. Now under that, there is a section with all the lights. So I have all the lights upstairs and downstairs and outside in, in the garden and swimming pool and so on. In the beginning, I have configured those uh, buttons so they would uh, toggle the lights on click. But it was causing issues on mobile phones. When I was scrolling through the screen, sometimes I could uh, toggle the light by mistake. So I don't do that anymore. It's currently configured to show more info by default. So I can toggle the light from here. But uh, I could also uh, toggle it by double clicking from the screen or indeed by uh, holding the button on a mobile phone. It will toggle the light as well. So it's convenient, but it's safe to use as well. And the way this is configured is in this case, this is horizontal stack because I wanted to have these two panels and each is a glance card with two entities. So the only thing I have added is I added the double tap action and hold action both with the action toggle. So this way I can control the lights uh, from the home assistant. I could also control them by the physical switch on the wall and uh, many of them are also controlled uh, by automations. For example, to turn the lights on and off based on the motion sensors or based on some timers. So that was the first column of my home page. And I think it's a good time to talk about the layout of my dashboard. I think you have realized by now that my dashboard layout behaves slightly differently than the default. In the default layout, the cards are sorted horizontally first and when they reach the end, it will jump back to the first column. In my case, 
uh, the cards are organized in a column vertically, similar to if I would use the vertical stack, but I don't use it. And this is because I'm using the custom layout card by Thomas Loven. Thomas is a, a great contributor to the front end of the Home Assistant. Let me show you how it works. The layout card is uh, simply available from the community store in the front end. So this is the card. And there are two ways to do that. Uh, we can either configure it in the YAML or more easily we can select that via the user interface and this is what we're gonna do. But before we do that, let me show you uh, the four options we can configure. The horizontal is similar to the standard Home Assistant layout. So it places each card to a new column and when it reaches the end, it will jump back to the beginning. But unlike the default layout, if you use the horizontal, we have a couple of configuration options available. Then we have the masonry, which tries to horizontally balance out the height of individual cards, which is great if you have cards of different height. So what it does is it uses the minimal height uh, to decide whether it has to jump to the next column. So if you look at it here, you have the first card put in the first column, but because the height was smaller than the minimum height, it put the next card below. With that, it was higher than the minimum, so it put the next card to the next column, and again, the fourth below that. And the same way, the fifth and sixth card follow in the next column, and after that, it would jump back to the first. Then, because the fourth card was uh, already high, it would then put the last card to the last column, so it would try to balance out the height of individual column. I think it's great if you want to use the space on the screen optimally. It's not so great if you want to have the cards in particular order. Then there is the grid layout, which is probably the most advanced for you. It uses the uh, style sheets grid feature, so you can use the media queries to optimize the screen for different devices. By coming back to the vertical layout, what it does is it will put all the cards in one single column, which might not seem like a very useful layout, but it has this layout break card, which will then uh, break the column and put the following card to the next column. Combined with the width parameter, which allows me to set the minimum width of the column. So if I see it on a mobile phone in a portrait mode where the width of the column is smaller than this width, it won't break to the next column and show them all in a single column. But, and then there is also other parameters like maximum column and uh, the maximum width, but I'll show that to you uh, when we look at the view for the cameras. So coming back to my dashboard, if I go to the edit dashboard, then I can go to edit view, and then there's a new tab layout. So for this uh, view, I selected the vertical, but I can select the other three or there's the default. And then for each layout, there are the options. For the first one, I'm using the defaults, but uh, for example, for the second one, I have configured some option. I'm gonna explain them when we get there. So I'm using the vertical layout. So I use those break cards at the end of the column. So I can do it by adding a card. I will just say break, and I can add this break and add it in there. And then I can move that to wherever I break to a next column and the following card will jump to the next. So I'm gonna remove this one and uh, those two cards will jump back where they were before. So let's see how it works. So if I resize the screen, it will use uh, two columns, so it's still all readable. And if I reduce it even further, it will jump to a single column, which is great for mobile phones. Then, in the middle, I have a status of different things around the house. So, uh, the famous uh, garbage collection. So, there are different types of garbage from general waste, uh, bio, uh, plastic, papers, and uh, large volume waste. Then, the status of the dryer and the washing machine. Again, there is an automation that would notify us when the washing is finished, for example. Uh, then the mailbox status, so there is a mailbox here next to the entrance and there is a sensor that would notify me if there is a mail. Then the, the heating, which is currently off, controlled from uh, this panel here about the heating, I'm gonna get there in a second. Then the uh, pump 
in the swimming pool. This one is controlled by automation depending on the water temperature. So you can see the water temperature here as well. It's nice and warm. The water is 27.6 because it's sunny. I'm not heating the pool right now. And then the uh, water main, uh, which is uh, open and there are leak sensors and this was automatically uh, close when leakage is detected. Uh, I made a video about that, uh, so you can watch that if you're interested. Now, let's look at how it's done. There are two rows, and each is a grid with five picture entity cards. I use the custom cards templator, so this is uh, another customization. If I go to front end, it's a uh, Lovelace card templator, and what it does is it allows me to uh, first of all, I say there is a type custom card templator that uses entity general waste sensor. And I use this one in here instead of name, I call it name template. And then I can uh, here uh, write a template that would, that would define the value. So this is what the card templator does. Other than that, this is a picture entity that is taking the sensor and based on its value, it's showing different pictures. So if the value is zero, it will show this picture. If the value is one, it'll show that picture for tomorrow. And uh, if the value is two, it will show that uh, general is off. So this is today, tomorrow, and uh, later than that. So the three different pictures that I have created. I have the same thing for the other uh, waste types. So this is one for the bio, one for the plastics, one for the paper, and one for the general. They're all the same. Uh, and this is well documented on my GitHub page. So that's that. Then I have uh, the similar configuration for the dryer and washing machine. Same thing, except in here, I don't use the template card. So it's a simpler picture entity. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Just regular picture entities. Nothing special about that. Now, following the concept only to show things that I have to see. I have a panel here that shows all the open doors. I don't have to see that panel if all the doors are closed. But let me open the doors to the office and let's see what happens. And when I open it, a panel will show with the status of the doors in different rooms, in the bedroom, office, the main door and so on. So the door closed itself now and the panel disappeared. To do that, I'm using a standard conditional card. Let me show you. So currently I do not see the conditional card because the doors are closed, but as soon as I enter the edit dashboard, it will show up in the edit mode. So this is great. And I can just edit the card and uh, what it does, there is a conditions and then there is the card. And in the conditions, I can add number of entities. And for each entity, I can configure whether I want to show the card, whether the state is equal to or is not equal to a given state. Now I can add additional entities in here. So initially I thought I'm gonna add all the different doors in here and it will show the card as soon as any of the doors is open. Unfortunately, the way how this conditional card works is it's hard coded that it will show the card when all of the conditions are fulfilled. There is no way to configure whether I want to have all or any or end and or condition, if you will. So for that reason, I have created a group of all the doors and the way the group works is the group will turn to on as soon as any of the entities within that group is on. So I'm faking this or condition by using the group entity. And then there is the card, which is uh, simply our glance card. If you want to see it in the code, this is what it is. Uh, there is a conditional card. There is the condition with the group. And then there is the glance card. Pretty straightforward. So this is the status of things. Below that, there are the controls for the shutters or for the shades. Similar to the lights uh, on a mobile phone, I wanted to prevent them to be moved by mistake uh, when I would just uh, try to scroll the screen on a mobile phone. But in here, it's slightly more difficult because uh, I use those sliders. So uh, those sliders, they would by default, you could move them uh, by drag and drop. So 
So what I have done is I am using the custom restriction card, which works in a way that if I click on a button, it will ask me whether I want to unlock the controls. And uh, if I did it by mistake, I can cancel out. And uh, if I don't want to do that, I will just uh, confirm OK. It'll be unlocked and then I can start controlling the shutters. Now let me show you how it's done. First, the custom control. You can find it in the hacks in front end and that's the restriction card. And there's a full documentation. It's quite a powerful thing. Uh, so let me show you the configuration. I'm gonna go into the edit dashboard and uh, here we go. So we have the custom restriction card when I unlock it, it will stay unlocked uh, by default for five seconds. So I have extended it to 10 seconds. And then uh, you can configure what type of restriction you want. Uh, for example, you can ask for a pin. I didn't want that. Uh, I only wanted to show a confirmation dialog with this text. So that's it for this uh, restriction card, pretty simple. And the restriction card has a card that it uh, restricts. And in this case, it's a grid card. So I have a grid card with two columns. So these are the two columns. And in each column, there is a, a vertical stack card, but I'm not using the standard vertical stack because if I did that, those, they do not have this uh, border and they're slightly bigger. So I'm using the custom vertical stacking card. Other than that, it's the same. And each stack has two cards. And these are both custom cards. It's the cover element, which shows those controls, the control up, control down and stop, and then the slider. So they're all the same. In here uh, for the master bedroom, I only have one window. So I'm using the uh, custom gap card because I wanted to create this gap in here in the grid. But then each of them is the same. It's a custom vertical stacking card with the cover element and the cover slider entity. For the shades that are tilting here in the gallery, uh, I have uh, three cards. The first two are the same, and then I'm adding additional slider entity that controls the tilt attribute. So it's the same as this one for position, but on top of that, it has this attribute tilt. And that's it for the middle column. And on the right side, there is the main camera. And there are a couple of controls. There's a temperature outside, temperature in the swimming pool, and then it shows uh, the state of the gate. So right now the gate is open, so it also shows the icon, which allows me to close it by tapping here. And uh, it shows me the icons for the garage doors, if they are open. So let me show you how it's done. So you probably guessed it's a picture element. It's got the front camera in here in live view and then it's got the elements. For all the picture element cards, uh, I like to put a information icon to the left corner because unlike the picture entity, which when I can click, it will open the camera in a full screen. The picture elements don't do that. So I'm putting this uh, information icon in here, which uh, essentially does the same. So it's an icon with the entity camera front and I click on it, it will open the camera in the full screen. Then there is the state label with the entity sensor temperature outside. I'm adding the prefix with this uh, thermometer. And then there's the style sheets with the position and color. I like to use the transformation style because by default, the picture elements uh, positions uh, each element uh, by the middle. So it has minus 50, minus 50. And I like to uh, reset it back to zero, zero so I can align them. And we'll talk more about it when we talk about the car for the electric car. I also making the font size uh, relative to the view width and I'm making it slightly smaller because I was struggling with it on the smaller screens. Then I have the same for the swimming pool temperature. And then I have some conditions. So uh, when the binary sensor gate is on, then it'll show this icon, which, which has a tap action that will close the gate. And it will also show the icon in a red color. And then I have another element with the opposite condition. So when the gate is off, it will just show the icon in a white color. And I'm doing similar thing uh, for the garage doors. 
So when the right one is uh, open, it will show the icon. And when the left one is open, it will show the icon. And then there is the position. So it's pretty straightforward. Again, following the same concept, I only show the controls when they are relevant. Then there is a one-liner with the sunrise and sunset, but when I click on it, it will open this custom control that will show me the position of the sun and uh, different uh, interesting times related to sunrise and sunset. So this is again the same concept, only to show what is important. In this case, I only show the sunrise and sunset, but if I'd like to see more, I have the option. This one is using a custom collapsible car. Let's look at it. So the collapsible card is a custom card. So again, the easiest way to get it is through the community store front end. And uh, here it is, it's a collapsible card. Inside the card, we're also using a custom sum card, a great card that I discovered on the Home Assistant blog. And we also use the custom Lovelace card templator. So it's a combination of three custom cards. So let's see how it's done. Uh, I'm gonna go to edit dashboard edit so starting from the back so this is the custom sun card and that's what it shows and on top of that we have the custom collapsible card which does exactly what it says it allows you to collapse the card and show it when you need to and on top of that we have the custom card templator that allows us to use a template for the collapsible card title because when the cart is collapsed, I want it to still show the sunrise and sunset value, which are the attributes of the sun, sun entity. So that's that. So under that, there is the weather forecast for next five days and the precipitation today and the forecast for precipitation and the accumulated uh, rain over the last three days. And I use that again for automations for the irrigation uh, which is controlled by those buttons here as well. I could uh, control them manually, but again, they're controlled by automation. The configuration, very quickly, there's nothing special about that. The weather forecast, it's a standard weather forecast card using the home location. The precipitation is a grid with uh, three gauge cards. And for each of them, I could configure different thresholds, the minimums, maximum, and the color ranges for different zones. Uh, this is how it looks like in YAML, uh, if you would like to check the detail. And finally, the irrigation, it's a plain glance card like everything else. So that was the first view, the home page. The second one is for the security cameras. I was reviewing security cameras recently, so I have plenty to play with. So I ended up with six in my home assistant. I have one in front of a house, one in the shed looking towards the house, one is in the back, then I have one here in the bedroom looking in the garden, and then I have two inside. Now, for the configuration, first, the layout. I'm using the uh, layout card here, and I use the horizontal layout. Why? If I would use the default, it will show me those small uh, camera images based on the uh, resolution of the monitor and they wouldn't even use the whole screen estate. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to get more control around that. So what I use is I use the horizontal. I set the minimum width to 550 pixels. I say I would like to have two columns because if I didn't say that, uh, it will again create those three. So if I say it's two columns, it will make them bigger. And I'm also using this max width because by default, it's a multiply of, of the width and uh, the cards wouldn't stretch to the whole width in some conditions. So the way it works is if I start shrinking the screen, it shows uh, those big camera images, but as soon as it becomes smaller, it will show those large camera images across the whole screen. And then they will scale down all the way until the minimum width is reached, after which uh, there's gonna be a scroll bar. So with this, I was able to achieve uh, kind of a responsive design very simply using three parameters. Now for the configuration, most of them are just picture entities which use the camera live view I have a few that are picture elements and we went through that on the homepage, so we're not gonna do it again. 
And there's a couple of things I want to talk about this camera because this is the uh, Reolink 511 with the optical zoom. So I added those zoom controls here with three presets. So the first one is going to zoom out. The top one is going to zoom in. And the middle one is going to zoom somewhere in the middle where the border of the image is going to be right at the edge of this uh, neighboring building. It's going to zoom out first and then it's going to zoom in to this preset position. Now, how it's done? First, uh, I put this uh, background in here because otherwise I wouldn't see those icons if the uh, sky was uh, white. So uh, if you look at that, uh, there is this there is this icon again on the left corner. We mentioned that on the home page. Then there is this image which is 60% transparent black PNG, which I'm positioning uh, on the right corner. And then I have those icons for the uh, magnify plus, magnify minus and the middle one. And they are spaced by 7% and uh, each is calling a service script zoom in, script zoom out and zoom medium. And now let me show you uh, what those scripts do. And if you look at the script, uh, each of them are calling the Reolink dev PTZ control and they're sending commands to uh, zoom incremental or zoom decremental. And what they do is they send the command and they wait for five seconds, for example, and then they send a stop command because this is how those PTZ controls work. They'll keep zooming until you send the stop command. So the zoom in is sending zoom incremental, zoom out is sending zoom decremental. The most interesting one is the zoom medium. And the way I do that is I will send zoom decremental because I don't know what position it is in. So I zoom it all the way out. I wait six seconds, then I stop it. And then I will send zoom incremental. And by experimenting, I figured that if I do that for one second and 670 millisecond, and then I stop it, it'll stop right there uh, at the edge of this building. So this was the camera in the garden. And here on the left, uh, I'm just showing the temperatures again in the pool and uh, on the thermometer in here. The third view controls multimedia. I made a video about multimedia a couple of weeks ago. If you didn't see that, here is the link. And now let's see the interface. This one uh, currently looks very empty, but as soon as I turn something on, so for example, I will switch to Spotify and you see that the panel for Spotify is shown in here. And when I click in on the button in here, to start playing, and I, let me just turn the volume down. In a second, it will turn the Spotify on and it, it will show the panel for Spotify in here with different playlists and controls so I can move to next song, uh, pause, and so on. And there you go. Uh, so this is the Spotify list. Now let me turn it off and it will disappear again. And the same thing for the TV. Uh, if I turn the TV on, there is this uh, button for this LG 4K TV where I can switch to Netflix or the satellite, uh, live TV, YouTube, uh, Xbox, the different applications. And what it does is there is an automation behind that that controls, for example, the Denon uh, device that is uh, the amplifier. Uh, with the speakers, so they would reconfigure the TV based on uh, what application plays. But I can also control it manually in here, so I can switch to the Denon amplifier or the internal sound. There is a panel for text input. So if I look at the view configuration, again, I'm using the uh, layout card, so it's using the vertical layout again. And in the first column, the first view is a grid uh, with five columns. I said I want to have a five because I wanted to make them smaller. But I really have three in here. And these are the input Boolean helpers. And they control uh, where the music is played on and off. Under that, there is the entities card. 
with again with the helper with the list of radio stations under that there is another helper for the volume again the entities card then we have a break in the second column this one shows only when Spotify is selected so it's a conditional card and it's set on condition if the radio station is not one of those radios that are not Spotify and the card is a custom media player card which allows me to do lots of configurations so let me show it to you so it's a custom mini media player card I have the icon in here and then the options but this is the second column the third one is again a custom card with a uh, custom LG remote controller and uh, I made it a little bit smaller and then I configured different sources buttons so you can refer to the uh, repository for the full configuration in the right column I have a media control card for the TV and under that I have again a conditional card which uh, only shows when the media player TV is on and the card is a grid with four columns with four buttons and uh, those buttons they call services so the first one uh, calls the service remote send command to broadlink remote and it will send command to Denon volume up and uh, then I have volume down then I have uh, this one which is calling a script that switches TV to Denon and uh, this one is switching TV to internal then I have this set of icons with the TV stations I could have used uh, this one in here in the on the remote but I prefer to do it this way so this is simply a grid card with uh, pictures and each of them is calling a service to switch to a specific station uh, and again it's a conditional card which only shows when the TV is on and then I have a custom card for the LG TV again it shows when the TV is on and the card is custom web OS keyboard card and it allows me to use my phone or a tablet instead of a keyboard for the TV the next view controls the heating again I made a video about it a couple of months back here is the link and uh, let me quickly recap how the interface looks like so the card is our famous uh, vertical layout again and then uh, there are three types of cards really first there's a panel where we can set the parameters for the heating so there is a mode currently it's off but then it could be automatic always on or economic which is sort of more aggressive auto and there's a special mode for vacation uh, speaking of vacation we can set the temperature for the vacation in here then there are three input boolean helpers that help to control the heating mode uh, first one is automatically set when someone is home and then there's two which uh, we can override to set the mode for heating in the bedroom and in the office to heat during the day because normally they are on the low temperature during the day but we have a small workplace in the bedroom and then there is the office and if we there we can turn them on uh, to keep higher temperature uh, during the day and then there is a switch for the electric heater in the bathroom which we normally turn on by the switch on the wall but we can also do it in here and this one is automated when we turn it on it'll automatically turn off after two hours so looking at the card it's a vertical stack but again I'm using the custom one which has this border around it and then there are entities uh, there is this input select then there is a horizontal stack with two columns and entities for the switch again the second type of card controls the thermostat in individual rooms so it looks like that and it repeats pretty much for each room and each of them consists of the uh, cards for the individual thermostats that are mounted on the heaters and then there is a input boolean that uh, we can switch from low to high temperature so it's automatically switched based on the presence during the winter and then the controls which allow us to set 
the low and high temperature. So here for each room we can set what is the high temperature and low temperature and by this switch you can switch it between the low and high and these are the thermostat. So if I open it, it's a vertical stacking card again for the border to group them together. And then uh, there is really two cards in the stack. Uh, both are grids. The first grid has uh, the thermostat. So it's a custom thermostat dark card. It's always the uh, entity of the thermostat. And what's great about this custom card is it allows to have a separate entity for the thermostat and for the temperature meter because those uh, thermostats they do not measure temperatures so there is a separate temperature sensor you can configure it like that then uh, we can set up the modes and uh, when i hold it it will uh, show me more info and then there is the second thermostat in the same room and uh, in the second row there is a grid with uh, three columns and it's a button card which uses the input boolean entity for the button and normally when I push the button it will just change the color um, on top of that I'm using the card templator and I'm using it to change the uh, name of this button based on the state uh, of this input helper so I'm changing it from day to night this is really optional but I always like that so it says it's night here and when I turn it on it says it's a day and then there is the two other entities and these are really entities with the input numbers for the temperature day and temperature night. And this one repeats for each room. And finally, the third type of card is uh, the temperatures, the internal temperatures. So I have here a uh, chart. So it's a, a custom mini graph card, which has a list of entities uh, in different rooms and it shows temperature in last 24 hours, uh, one point per hour. This uh, mini graph card is very powerful. I'm also using it uh, here for the humidity and uh, for the sensor that calculates the feels like temperature. So this is a grid card with those two charts, one next to the other. And in here, I'm configuring the same mini graph uh, card uh, with uh, thresholds. So the chart is changing color uh, based on the values. This view was about the temperatures inside the house. The next one is about the temperatures outside the house, about the weather. I chose the weather forecast and the current temperature and precipitation. Let me show you. So the outside temperature is here on the right, next to a pool temperature. Under that there is the precipitation today forecast and last three days. And the precipitation history. There was a rain this morning and this is why the temperature was a little bit lower. Uh, on the left side uh, there is the forecast panel so it looks like we'll have some more rain tomorrow. So this view is very simple but what is interesting about it is that uh, there are those two columns and they are completely different size and they also behave differently because if I resize the window you will learn that the page behaves responsively. If I start resizing, this right panel will keep its uh, width and the left side will be shrinking. And it'll be shrinking to a point until this thing can't shrink anymore. And if I keep shrinking, this right panel will jump below this page. And if I continue shrinking, it will continue to the point where I won't be able to see those six panels here, after which I will show a horizontal scroll bar here in the window. So this is what we call responsive design. And uh, let me show you how it's done. So if I edit the panel and I go to the edit view layout, then you can see it's using a grid layout and uh, we're using a grid template and we have some media queries here. So there are two breakpoints, one on 1,500 pixels and one on 800 pixels. Now, before I go into explanation, I'll show you one more thing. Those two panels, so this is simple web page with the URL of the web page. But if I go to into code, I have entered uh, this piece of code in here for the view layout and I named this area forecast. And if I go to the right side, 
Again, this is vertical stack with uh, four cards. The second one contains a horizontal stack with two cards with a mini grub card. So this is pretty basic. I don't have to go into that. But if I show the code editor, again, we have here view layout and I call this current. So this is arbitrary name I've chosen. And then if I go to this uh, layout again, I said that by default, the grid template has the right column of the size 400 pixels and the left column is automatic and they'll be sorted in a way that they'll be for a cast and then current on the right. And then I have two conditions. If the width is somewhere between 1500 and 800 pixels, what it'll do is it'll change the layout so in the top row there'll be both columns occupied by the forecast and under that there'll be the current panel uh, with a blank next to it. And as for the size, the top row is using both, so here it doesn't matter, but for the bottom one, the first column is gonna be 400 pixels and the right side is gonna be scaling until I reach 800 pixels. And after that, I will keep the same layout, but I will fix both columns to 400 pixels. Uh, so the horizontal bar under the window will appear. So with that, I have a full control on different devices and screen sizes. The next view is really general settings. It allows us to quickly turn on and off automations or group of automations. For example, if you have guests or if you want to turn them off temporarily for whatever reason. The next view is uh, kind of special. I care about the environment. Now, one of the things we have done is we bought an electric car. Even though you might question how much it contributes to the environment overall. Here we go. We have it and we love it. Now, this next view shows us the statistics about the car, the charging, consumption and all the uh, entities you have about the car and allows us to control it. Let me show you. So here it is, it's just regular picture elements card. The only thing different about it is uh, I wanted to have this uh, card a little bit larger than the default card, but I didn't want to have it in a panel mode, in a full screen, because it would look weird on the big monitor. So I really want to make it like a space for two cards, even though I have only one right now. And the way it is done is I'm using the layout card again. So I'm using grid. Uh, so this is 900 pixels, fixed size, and the right column is scaling. And then if I reach 900 pixels, it's just going to be single column of 900 pixels. So if I will start scaling, you will see that this one stays 900 pixels and the right one is scaling. And if I reach here, it will just jump down and it will be a single column. As for the card, I use my favorite card templater, but this one is really used to change the label color if the doors are open or closed, so nothing essential. And then it's really picture elements with the image of the car and then all the information which uh, I render as an icon, text and the label with the sensor value. To align them properly, uh, I use the translate 00, because if I didn't do that, uh, it would align based on the center of the text. So I wanted to have them all aligned by the left margin. That's why I reset the transformation to zero, zero. And I'm also tweaking the font size. But other than that, it's a standard uh, picture elements card. So I'm gonna just slowly scroll through uh, so you could check it out. So this is the first part. Then it continues. Another part. This one is conditional, so if the car is charging, there'll be information in here on the left corner about the charging information. And it continues like that. Lots of information on a single card, but I think it looks quite neat. We're getting towards the end. The last two views are kind of administrative. The second from the end is uh, a view for my 3D printer, another passion of mine. Let's look at it. So here we go, this is my printer. I have a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint in it, so I have a number of sensors in there, so I can control it, I can turn it off remotely. And I have a camera here on the left, so I can see the current print. Again, it's a picture entity card, so if I edit it, uh, the camera in here, it's conditional card and only shows when the current state is not unknown, so when the camera is actually uh, available 
And then in here, this is a uh, picture elements with number of sensors. Again, I'm using the zero, zero position. All of them are state badges. I kept it really simple and it's using the 3D printer PNG file. So it's basically the same as the car. The last view is a sort of administrative view just for me. The others don't see that. Not that I would hide things, but well, they wouldn't be interested in those things anyhow. They're kind of low level technical details. And I also don't want them to turn something off by mistake that could cause some damage. So let's look at that. So the way I have done this card is there's a couple of vertical stacks. On the first one, there are some low level technical switches in here, like uh, turning off the uh, pool pump or the or a circulation pump for, for the heating and the information about the internet. Uh, so I have this automation for the router traffic shaping that's automatically based on the time can turn on the queuing for Netflix and YouTube. Uh, currently it's off, uh, but when I turn it on, it would limit the traffic uh, in here. And the second column, then I have a list of all the different devices with the presence information, uh, status of all the different batteries. This one is using uh, car templator. This one and this one they're using car templator. So for example, for the batteries, if the battery level of any of the sensors is below a certain level, I will change the title to change the batteries. Otherwise it's going to be just batteries. And I use the same for the printer toner, which is a custom bar card. And the third column is some statistics from my GitHub. So I have over 4,000 downloads from my garbage collection integration. Quite pleased with that. And on the right side, I've been playing with some uh, smart movement detection, which is a combination of uh, door sensors and motion sensors. So I have them in here. And uh, there is a card with statistics from my Nook, which hosts Home Assistant. And I didn't create this panel. I found it somewhere on the internet. So this is how the card looks like. It's using config template with number of variables. There's some entity cards, custom bar card for the disk, uh, for the RAM and CPU. This is horizontal stack of two custom bar cards. And in the very bottom, there is a mini graph card. So I don't wanna go into further detail because this video is long enough and this card really is sort of informative. There's nothing much to do with home automation. But if you want me to make a video about this one, let me know. So this is my home assistant. Quite a lengthy video, wasn't it? But I hope you liked that and you'll find some inspiration in there because this is the reason I do them. Myself, I'm looking for inspirations all the time and I'm pretty sure I'll find some in the comments under the video. So if you like that, hit this like button, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.